Hi everyone, Rich Savell here. Today's educational video is about Kylus ascites. Now I know this isn't common, and I know it isn't critical care per se, but this can happen to critically ill patients, and we wanted to take a few moments and demystify some of the issues around it. We wanted to go over some of the pathophysiology, we wanted to go over the differential diagnosis, and we wanted to go over some of the treatment options. As you can see here, I've got a picture of some of the relevant clinical anatomy with the thoracic duct and how it goes back up here into the subclavian vein. So chylus ascites is defined when the thoracic or intestinal lymph is in the abdominal cavity. And as you can see here, it's uncommon. When you talk about the pathophysiology of chylus ascites, it's important to remember back to the original focus of what does the lymphatic system do. And I've broken it down into three major components. It's to remove interstitial fluid back into the venous system. It's obviously got an incredibly important immune function. But here our focus is on the lymph system to help transport lipids out of the intestine and into the bloodstream. Long chain triglycerides can't actually be transported by themselves because they're not water soluble and it's required for the body to place them into chylomicrons which are water soluble and can go back then into the bloodstream via the lymphatics. And it's these chylomicrons that give the name for chyle or chylus lymph and chylus ascites and that's what we're dealing with here and so the idea is something has either injured or is blocking the lymphatic flow causing leakage of what should normally be inside the lymph vessels, the cisterna chile, etc., and it's going into the peritoneal space. And as you can see here, we're either talking about traumatic injury or obstruction, which is either benign or malignant. This is a slide showing the differential diagnosis of the etiology of chylus societies. Neoplastic in adults is very common followed by a mention of cirrhosis. And so if you have a patient with cirrhosis, you should be keeping in the back of your mind the possibility of chylus ascites. Again, postoperative, and we'll be discussing that a little bit more later, but any kind of trauma to the lymph vessels can do this. And then in developing nations, infectious etiologies can be very important. So in Western countries, the most common causes are abdominal malignancies, lymphatic abnormalities, and cirrhosis. And in developing countries, tuberculosis and filariasis, infectious causes, are very important. And again, I've put another nice picture here showing the uh, course of the thoracic duct in the body to help you understand the underlying anatomy. I wanted to take a few moments to talk about malignancy in chylus societies. This is the most common cause in adults, and lymphoma itself accounts for, in some case series, one-third to one-half of all cases. And again, the idea is that obstruction and invasion into the lymphatic, channel, in lymphatic channels leads to disruption of normal lymph flow. And I've listed here other potential malignant causes of chylus societies. Important to remember, if you care for patients after surgery, that they can develop this after trauma. And again, it can occur around one week after abdominal surgery. And I've listed here some potential surgeries, abdominal aortic aneurysm repair, pancreatic oduodenectomy, ruin y gastric bypass. But again, any kind of surgery where they're near the thoracic duct or the cisterna chile, the clinician needs to keep it in mind. So if you send off the fluid for analysis, if it's milky and cloudy, you should be thinking about chylus societies and consider and be sending it off for triglyceride levels and if it's above 200 to be extremely concerned that this patient has chylus societies. The management of patients with chylus societies is interesting and important and the idea is to think about chylus societies and to think about back to that important differential diagnosis of why your patient has it because you need to go back to try and treat the underlying etiology. So if you think they have lymphoma, treat their lymphoma. If you think there's an injury to the duct, see if you're coordinating with your surgeon 
to see if we're going to treat it medically and hope that it improves, or does the patient require another procedure? The type of diet they should be given is a high-protein, low-fat diet with medium-chain triglycerides, and I've listed here a recommended regimen, and that you don't use the medium-chain triglycerides if the patient has advanced cirrhosis. This can cause neurological problems. And the idea behind using the medium-chain triglycerides is that they're absorbed directly into the intestinal cells and transported as free fatty acids and glycerol directly to the liver via the portal vein. And it leads to the reduction of the production and flow of chyle. The idea here is that it's the long-chain triglycerides and fatty acids that require being placed into chylomicrons that have to then flow through the thoracic duct, and that the medium chain triglycerides can be managed directly into the bloodstream because of their ability to be water soluble. Some other adjunctive therapies include octreotide, large volume paracentesis, and I mention here, and again, this is obviously a very challenging situation, but if your patient does have cirrhosis, and Kyla Society's refractory to medical therapy to consider a TIPS procedure. And so in conclusion, our main points were that this isn't common, and that's why we wanted to take a moment to talk about it. We wanted to share with you what to do if you're working up your patient with abdominal symptoms and a paracentesis is performed and milky fluid comes out. You should consider Kyla Society's and you should stay focused in on helping to quickly diagnose that they have chylosocieties, remembering the underlying pathophysiology of what may be going on, to remember the important differential diagnosis of chylosocieties in terms of why your patient might be having it, and to focus in on quickly determining which of those things your patient has, and then focusing in on some therapies to lessen the amount of output of the chylosocieties, and interestingly, Medical therapy in most cases seems to help if you combine it with therapy to treat the underlying cause. However, if it is a trauma issue or related to surgery, then in those patients, if they're an appropriate candidate for uh, reoperation and treatment of the injury to the thoracic duct, then that should be a consideration that is given. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch our video today.